Okay, so welcome to our last module for our sports tourism course. And for this module, we're going to talk about the temporal considerations in sports tourism development. If you remember, in our previous module, we talked about the spatial considerations in sports tourism development. We talked about how we should take into consideration the area, the landscape, and the physical space of where the sports attraction and destinations are in order to further attract and make it as an efficient tourism icon. So in this video, we now talk about time considerations in relation to sports tourism. And for the first video, we'll talk about seasonality and how it affects sports tourism and sports tourism. So first, Let's define seasonality. So seasonality is the temporal imbalance in the phenomenon of tourism which may be expressed in terms of dimensions of such elements as number of visitors, expenditure of visitors, traffic on highways, and other forms of transportation, employment, and admissions to attractions. So in a given calendar year, we can expect that there are certain months that have high tourism traffic. We also expect that, you know, there are times within the calendar year that tourists have more money. For example, Pasco or in Christmas and holidays, they usually have more money for them to be able to spend for tourism expenditures. We also expect that there are um, times of the year where there's more traffic in terms of transportation. Like, for example, when we talk about, um, let's say, uh, school years no in the time where school is available we expect more traffic and therefore it's not very uh, good for tourism so uh within a calendar year we can look into certain imbalances or differences in the way tourism can be imagined or tourism could be applied in a given area so for every destination or for every country there's a different seasonality pattern in terms of tourism and in the philippines we also see that there are certain months that have high tourist traffic and there are also months that we call lean months in terms of tourism and the seasonality is both affected by uh, the conditions found in the area of origin no, outside the Philippines and also what is happening in the site of destination no, within the Philippines. Now for international tourists, we see there's a higher tourism traffic in the Philippines during January and March. So why? Because we also see that during this time, it's winter season in uh, northern hemisphere countries in western countries so we expect that there are people trying to find more tropical climates so one of them is the philippines next in terms of peak months in terms of domestic tourists um, we see in the philippines that there are higher uh, tourist traffic during april and may and of course this is very much related to one of course summertime or in we get to find beaches during that time and at the same time especially during the old uh, calendar year for school year um this is also vacation time for uh, those who are going to school so this is the perfect time for filipinos to go to another domestic uh, tourist attraction or destination and the low season for tourism in the philippines is june to october because one this is rainy season in the philippines and two we have classes during that time so ito yung mga tinat ito yung mga lean years natin or lean months natin in relation to um, tourism in the philippines now what are the factors affecting seasonality in tourism in a given area so the first one is natural factors and the number one natural factor is climate of course, we know that there are certain areas that are more attractive to tourists during summertime, or during winter time, or during springtime. No, this could be considerations for tourists to come there. Another would be the climate from their country of origin. So, like I said earlier, you know, countries where in the experience four seasons, no, they are they want to escape the winter and go to a more tropical, hotter place. No, so the climate from that uh, country of origin of the tourists also affect 
you know, wanting to go to a certain area. Like, for example, in the Philippines as well, no, during um, winter time in other countries, because we want to experience winter in other countries, we also go to other countries like Japan or Korea during November, December, January to, to be able to experience winter. So, climate is an example of a natural factor that basically uh, influences seasonality in a given area in relation to tourism. Another set of factors that affect the seasonality of tourism in a given area are institutional factors which are basically based on calendars and social events that happen in a regular annual fashion. So for example, in the Philippines, April and May is our peak season for tourism because this is usually the old, you know, uh, uh, vacation for the students. No? This is vacation time for the students, so there's a lot of free time for families to go from one area to another. Another peak season of domestic tourism in the Philippines is during November and December. Christmas, sorry, de December, no, because of Christmas time, so there's long Christmas breaks. Another would peak peak areas is during long weekends. So these are already calendared early in the year so we expect that during long weekends where there is no classes or no work during Fridays or Mondays we expect a lot of tourism activity happening during those times. So that's an example of institutional factors or calendared events influencing the seasonality or the uh, demand for tourism at a certain time within the same period of the year. And of course, these uh, factors are influenced by other larger factors that basically change them. First one is globalization. Of course, due to globalization, we also get to experience the climate of other countries because we, it's easier for us to travel outside. And at the same time, because of globalization, uh, we can also go out of our seasonal variations and follow the seasonal variations of a more global calendar, especially when we talk about, you know, sports seasons happening in an international fashion. So, for example, in Japan, uh, in the Olympics, supposedly it's in July. So, whatever is your schedule for the year, if you want to be able to watch the the Olympics, you have to drop everything off and you have to go and uh, watch the Olympics during July, even if it's not seasonal in your area. So globalization can change the seasonality patterns of tourism in a given area. Another, of course, is climate change. Of course, for instance, no, uh, I went to uh, Sweden like three years ago, you know, and uh, uh, originally we were expecting that when we would get there in March, it would already be the end of the winter. And apparently, uh, because of climate change, winter started late, you know, in in Sweden. So. Uh, us and even the locals they weren't prepared for that very cold environment so because of climate change our seasonality patterns also get disturbed now we talked about first seasonality in terms of tourism seasonality also is seen in the sports especially in relation to natural factors you no know? for example football rugby sports are usually done in summer because usually if it's in the rainy season it while you can still play football and rugby and and soccer during this time, it would feel different and and difficult because it's raining, you no. Know? So usually we set up these events during the summer, so that there's lesser um, chances of rain. Definitely not in the winter because it's. I would imagine it would be difficult to do these sports during the winter, and then uh, also adventure related sports are usually done in the summer. Again, because uh, we want lesser rainfall during the time when we're doing an adventure tourism. And of course, winter sports are naturally done during winter time. So definitely, you know, there are certain sports that are highly affected by climate and natural factors that affect seasonality. Now, there are also other factors on seasonality that is specific to sports tourism. The first one is social pressure and the fashion. Uh, uh, for example, it, we follow the schedule of the celebrities who are the attraction in that sports destination and those who are privileged enough to be able to go out of their way to be able to do their sports. Siyempre, these are also things that affect seasonality of um, tourism demand in sports. 
It could also be inertia or tradition, like there are certain people who go and participate in sports, you know, at the same time every year uh, because it is something that they have been traditioned to do. You know, they, this is something that they were accustomed to doing and they have scheduled their lives and their years for this. And finally, in terms of sports tourism that is found, not found in other forms of tourism is that a uh, seasonality of sports tourism is also dependent on the scheduling of sporting season. So, you know, we expect high tourism influx every Olympics or every regional international games. We also expect higher, um, higher tourism influx for domestic tourists when we talk about, um, you know, basketball seasons in the center, uh, in central locations, you know, from peripheral to central locations they go when there is a, uh, when there are seasons uh, of sports happening. So um, these are also other factors that influence the seasonality in sports tourism. So this is an example of a visual model that we can make use in order to understand the different ways that seasonality could be affected by many different factors. So the first factor are demand factors and these are institutional and natural factors in the origin area. So in short, where the tourists are coming from. So as I explained earlier, probably the reasons why they are going here in the Philippines at certain months because in the country of origin, it's cold, no? it's winter, and they're looking for a more tropical country during that time. No? Or for example, in other countries, um, this is a holiday for them and they want to spend it um, in another place. So these are demand factors and demand factors come from the origin areas or where the tourists are coming from. We can also look at supply attributes and supply attributes are the institutional and natural factors that are found in destination areas. So let's say the destination area is the Philippines. So usually what are the natural factors that make Philippines a good supply for tourism products? One, during summer because of course uh, it's hot no, and it's not very rainy so it's very conducive for uh, sightseeing or going to the beach no, because it's not uh, rainy season. Another would be for institutional factors would be again going in the Philippines during summer because everybody is on vacation at a given period of time. So of course there are more people who are engaged in tourism work during this time. Now these factors are influenced by modifying actions no, from institutional um, and organizational sources. No? It could be one, differentiating uh, pricing and taxation at a given time. So for example, no, during lean time, uh, for example, July to October, we expect that tourism expenditure would be lower and the prices of tourism products would be lower as well. No, kasi nga hindi masyadong mataas ang supply during lean year so ang tendency ng mga tourism providers ay babaan ng presyo nila so that those who aren't so much um, sold in terms of going to a, for a tour during these lean months would be enticed to take because mas mababa yung presyo. Next, we have new attractions and events. So definitely, when there's a new attraction and an event, no, despite the demand and supply factors and the natural and institutional factors that has something to do with the seasonality, um, usually tourists will still go with, because of the interest of the existence of a new attraction and an event. Next, we have technological innovation. So as we explained earlier, we indoorize a lot of the sports. So for example, in terms of basketball, we can do basketball during indoor. So the seasonality in relation to natural factors, it's not something that affects. So the, in the, the changing technologies that we apply in sports uh, could also influence the seasonality of the sport and ultimately sports tourism. Next, we have market diversification. Of course, there are certain uh, segment of the market who would usually go at a certain period of time. There's another segment of the market who usually goes another period of time. So for the working class, usually they go during the peak times, during the holidays, kasi nga they have work. But probably for the elderly, they can go anywhere or anytime because uh, they're already retired and they have money to spend so usually they could be accommodated during the lean times of tourism and sports. 
And of course, promotion. So, you know, if it's well promoted, despite it not being uh, a peak season for a certain attraction when it's promoted, it could still attract tourists to that area despite being in a lean season. Now, if you remember, we categorize sports into primary, secondary, and tertiary attraction. So, primary attraction is that that's the motivation that a sports tourist has in going to a certain destination and the main motivation is because you want to either engage in or spectate a certain sport so that's the primary attraction so how is seasonality affecting primary attractions so if the sport is a primary attraction in a tourist destination usually travelers still demonstrate to go to that area even if it's off season so dahil yun ay ang kanilang main agenda in touring then basically they would go there despite it being peak season or off season and you know sports tourists who consider sports destination as primary attraction are willing to negotiate through institutional and natural constraints so for example balikan natin ulit no when there's regional games or olympics no kapag ikaw may pasok ka ng July or August pero July nangyayari yung Olympics and it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for you to be able to watch Olympics then you would take a leave during that time you know um, you don't have to wait for the holidays to be able to join that because if you do you will miss most of the Olympics Olympics. So, uh, because that's your primary attraction, despite ito ay madaming obstacles in relation to your work life, you know, pupunta ka pa din because that is your main motivation in going to the place of destination. Now, for casual tourists, either sila ay secondary or tertiary attraction lang ang hanap. When we say secondary attraction, they go to a certain destination for leisure tourism or for other types of tourism and sports tourism is only their secondary motivation but it's still part of the itinerary when we say tertiary attraction these are people who didn't really have a sports destination or sports attraction in mind when they came to the certain destination but eventually when they learn about an existing sports tourism attraction they go there anyway so it wasn't in mind originally but eventually when they saw it when they got in the destination they went in anyway and for those casual sports tourism uh, tourists uh, usually they go for sports tourism destination during summer which is also coinciding with the other forms of tourism leisure tourism cultural heritage tourism etc so summer now the type of sports and the natural factors of seasonality go hand in hand. But there are certain sports that are more greatly affected by uh, seasonality and there are those that aren't. Like for example, indoor sports, wala masyadong effect ang seasonality. Especially kung ito ay nangyayari sa stadium na merong ceiling, di ba? like volleyball or basketball. And usually, kahit umuulan, bumabagyo, nagsusnow sa labas, you will still be able to perform this sport. So, in their sports, not much affected by natural seasonality. There are also those sports, outdoor sports, like football, soccer, that might be affected, but it's not a central concern. So, for example, during the season, summer siya ginawa, pero umulan pa rin during the game, usually napapatuloy pa rin naman. Although, of course, the... Uh, the conditions may not be as favorable in order to play as uh, comfortably uh, but you know even there's rain you know, uh, sports like soccer and football still go on next sports in natural landscapes are largely dependent on natural factors of seasonality so an example uh, winter sports you know, skiing etc uh, medyo kung walang winter hindi mo talaga siya magagawa no snowboarding hindi mo talaga magagawa yon probably ice skating you can do because it's indoor sport na no? you can indoorize uh, ice skating but um yun nga yung mga ganitong um highly dependent na mga uh, sports in terms of external conditions you can't do if it is out of season but sometimes, extreme weather conditions can be added as attraction in some sports. Like for example, during times or in sobrang malakas yung mga waves, you know, in the 
in the beaches, then they become surfing attractions. No, kasi nga, of course, for surfing, we need big waves for us to be able to enjoy surfing. So extreme weather conditions, they could also be a point of attraction for certain uh, expeditions or certain destinations. Uh, for example, those who are adventure tourists, no, who would really like to go, you know, uh, above, uh, below freezing um, conditions for them to be able to experience outdoor sports, you know, that could also be something that they would like to visit. It could also be an attraction for them, but only for a very select market segment who are into this very extreme conditions. Now, probably in our in our discussion, what we can say generally for general tourism and sports tourism and sports is that the most peak season of all of these activities happen during the summer. So during the summer, uh, tourism managers, sports managers, and sports tourism managers should be prepared for the influx of spectators and activity participants. But it doesn't mean that for the lean seasons, for the off season, we no longer try to attract um, visitors. You know, there's still a market segment that we can invite during the times we're in. It's not summer. So how do we do that? We can try to modify the sport product mix. So remember the four P's, right? We can either decrease the pricing during off season right we can do promotions during off season so that you know those who may not be incentivized to go for a sports tourism during these times that are off season will be uh, enticed kasi mas mababa ang presyo or mataas ang promotion so there's a uh, good uh, good uh, memorization of the um, attraction Next, you can also do market diversification like catering to sport subcultures. Like for example, during off seasons of sport, you can probably offer your um, sports attraction or sports venue as practice areas for training athletes. Huh? So for example, pag hindi na nagagamit yung track and field, uh, track and field court, pag hindi rin nagagamit yung uh, aquatic stadium, then we can probably offer them during off-season to those who would like to train. So that's market diversification. Looking for a market that might like to take into consideration uh, the destination that is not used during off-season for usage. And then, you can also take into consideration Nostalgia Sports Tourism as you know, something that you can install in your sports venue. So for example, meron kang stadium ng sports stadium, probably you can allot a space there where you can build a, a small museum that has memorabilia of the uh, sports celebrities that have played in that stadium. And that could be something that could be visited you know, by sports fans uh, in order for you to still accrue a lot of profit even if there are lean seasons for the sport, for your sport venue. And of course, since it's off-season, um, the tourism managers and sports managers and sports tourism managers could be incentivized to provide, you know, uh, group rates for off-seasons. So especially pag vacant yung accommodation, pag vacant yung sports venue, then it could be, um, you could think of other ways for you to be able to make this still an attraction kahit walang sport na nangyayari doon. So for example, for uh, indoor stadiums, you can probably offer that as a MICE venue, meetings, incentives, uh, conventions, and events. Now, for example, you can hold a conference in that indoor stadium, or you can probably hold a birthday party or a debut. Now, for example, diba, may debut na nangyari doon sa MOA Arena, pero sobrang yaman nung nag debut na yon. Pero, like I said, no, since off-season siya, then you can open up the sport venues to other things. No? For example, uh, you can use it for team building during the time of off-season. So, um, it is up to the creativity of the sports tourism manager to be able to maximize yung sports venue nila when it's not being used or during off-seasons. So, in this video, we learned about seasonality in sports tourism and sports tourism. We learned about the different national and institutional factors that influence 
uh, sports tourism and we talk about um, uh, the different seasonality and how it affects primary, secondary, and tertiary attractions. And we also learn about strategies on how to make use of off-seasons as a possibility to still attract tourism visitors. And of course, generally, we learn that summer is uh, an, a peak season, not only for sports, not only for tourism, but also for sports tourism. And therefore, as sports tourism managers, we need to, of course, be ready for the influx of tourists, activity participants, and uh, spectators during the, this time, but also maximize the possibilities that we can have for the off-season so that we can still capitalize on the empty venues during this time.